in a world where crime never sleeps. Join me as I uncover the hidden truth to each and every story. Each victim deserves to be heard. Every crime deserves a punishment. But when a case is left untold, it simply becomes a mystery. This is Untold Mysteries. Alante Davis, Timothy Blancher, and Paris Cameron were shot and killed after inviting a man over to a house party. On the night of May 25th, 2019, Lance Atterbury invited his friends over his home on the east side of Detroit to hang out. At the time, even though the home was still under construction, it was often used as the party spot for him and his friends. Please state your name for the record. Lance Atterbury. Mr. Atterbury, are you familiar with Devonshire in the city of Detroit? Yes. What is that location to you? My home. Is it still your home? No. You sold it? I still own it, I just don't live there. Had you been drinking that night? Yes. How much? A lot. At the time, even though the home was still under construction, it was often used as the party spot for Lance and his friends. That night, Lance invited Alante, Tim, Paris, Blair Keys, Armand Matthews, and Brendan Suttles to drink and have a good time. Around 8 p.m. that night, a neighbor began to complain about the noise. After a verbal altercation, one gunshot rang out. May 24th, a Friday night, back in 2019. Do you remember that date? Yes. Why? Uh, it's, it's a long story, but uh, some people were outside partying on the side of my house that night. They, I, they were outside partying, loud music, I ignored that. I have a 13-year-old daughter. 45 minutes went past. My 13-year-old daughter said, Mom, there's somebody outside doing something inappropriate. <coughs> I go to my window. I say, can you please sit off the side of my house? I have a 13-year-old daughter and my elderly aunt lives with me. One of them got smart with me and said, B, I'm wrong, you wrong if you don't want to see a close your window. I went back in my room. I grabbed my gun, went outside and did a warning shot. Once things calmed down, Armand, Blair, Alante, Tim and Paris decide to go to a nearby gas station around 10.30 p.m. For the record, where are you? Um, I'm, I'm about to open the, um, the door to the uh, situation. Uh, do you see Timothy in this room? Yes, he's the third person in the short set. Now. Paris is wearing all black, and then Alante is wearing a camouflage shirt. Do you see With shorts, basketball shorts. Pause it, please. Blair, do you see Mr. Robinson in the frame again? Yes. Paris spots Devon Robinson walk inside the store. After Paris introduced herself, the two began talking before exiting the store. What's happening at this point between the defendant and Paris? They're just talking about how they're going to the, get Devon to come back to the house. What do you see now? Devon walking out the gas station. What's happening here? Paris is like, what's that? You know, basically getting his attention. That's her shooting her shots. And that's me trying to tell, that's me trying to tell Paris to get back in the car. What is she doing? Trying to get Devon's attention while I'm telling her to get back in the car. So at that moment where she was walking back, she was basically giving him the address and the location to where we were. But she's telling you how, him where you guys are? Yeah, oh. she never was like, I want you to come. She just was like, you should come. It was like a suggestion more so. Does she eventually get back in the car? Yes. What's happening now? She's still shouting out at him. Because I believe he was standing right there. Like, not in the, not in camera view, but like he was like in a dark alley on the side. Paris is leaning out your back window? Yelling out, you know, don't forget to come through. Shortly after everyone arrived back at the home, Devon Robinson showed up. After a few drinks and conversations, Paris invites Devon Robinson upstairs. So, Paris asked me, do you want to try to, you know, suck his penis? Now, mind you, I'm drunk at the time, so I ain't even gonna lie. 
I was gonna do it. We had gotten in the room and they, you know, put left me in a room by myself with this boy. It was just something about him. Like, it was something off about this boy. He was like, why you not sucking? And I said, because me and you the same type of If you not sucking, I ain't about to suck. So I walked out. So they took him into the master Baby. bedroom. Paris, Tay, and Timothy took him into the master bedroom. Are you watching what's happening? Um, yes. No, 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 no. Not at that time. I went back downstairs. Do you come back up at some point? Yes. All right, tell me about that. So when I, when I come back up, I see all of them give him head. Paris, Timothy, and Tay, and Armand give them head. Shortly after, Lance comes in. But when Lance comes in, what happens? He turns on the light, he sees what's happening, he looked down, turned off the light, and gets to suck in two. How, how is the defendant appearing at this time? This lamp, this sitting. Did you have any contact with Mr. Robinson when he came to the Devonshire house? No, we didn't speak at all. Did you go to the store with everyone else? No. You stayed at Devonshire? Yes. When Mr. Robinson came to the house, what happened? He was quiet. He didn't speak. He didn't say much. Armand did indicate that he knew him. And at some point, did Mr. Robinson go upstairs? Yes. Did other individuals in the house go upstairs? Yes, three. Did you ever go upstairs? Not while everything was. Okay, so there was there was oral sex that happened in the house. Yes. Day. Did you participate in that? No. I was downstairs at the table, woke up, went upstairs. I was actually just going to bed. I seen everyone in the room. Uh, everyone was, you know, messing around or whatever. I sat down. Mr. Atterbury, did you participate that night? I did. With, with the oral sex that was occurring? Yes. Okay, with the stranger who came back from the guest. Yes. Did you leave at some point with Brendan Settles? Yes. Tell me about that. Um, got in the car and went to sleep. He drove the car home, I guess. I didn't come upstairs in a room where he was participating in an orgy with a transsexual and with other homosexuals that was in that room, and I participated in me being under the influence and curious. So mind you, I didn't see this young man leave, but before he left, he acknowledged everybody and everything, and he seemed really shook. Like, he was, the, the, the energy I got off of him was not friendly energy. He gave off energy. Like, you know, like he was disgusted. You know, I told him, you know, just take care of whatever. He said, oh, y'all, let's see me again. I don't know what that was about. We're sitting there, and next thing, like, literally, this is all we were doing was sitting there, and that's when the gunshots took place. Once Devon left the home, he went back to the prior gas station and was seen dry heaving and spitting. Less than an hour later, Devon Robinson returned wearing a ski mask and came into the home shooting. I was in the, in the dining room area. I really could not see the front door. Blair seen everything. Um, when I seen the gunshots, I immediately, you know, first we were all, uh, you know, we were like, what are they, are they fireworks? But, you know, we grabbed, I grabbed Timothy and I rushed down to the basement and I had him with me. When we were running down the basement, you know, he was saying something to me and he immediately stopped talking. He grabbed my hand and put my hand where the bullet shot was on his chest. I held pressure, I, you know, I ran back upstairs because I heard Blair screaming. I ran back upstairs to make sure everything all right. I seen Teddy and Paris curled up in the corner. Um, I called 911. I stayed on the phone with 911. I ran back downstairs. I had a pressure on Miami because he was still, he was still breathing. He was Timothy. He was looking at me. And I had pressure on him. When the cops got there, she put her gun to my face, made me take pressure off of Timothy. And my belief that is when he really lost his life because once I moved my hands off his chest, the blood was. It was rushing a lot faster than what it was. Call one. Call on Saturday, May 25th, 2019, 4 59 and 13 seconds a.m. Detroit 911 with a special Sunday emergency. Yeah. Hello, one one, please. Uh, the emergency phone just came in and shot my friends. We got it. Okay. An ambulance, please. An emergency ambulance. 16760 Winthrop. Oh, no, not Winthrop.
Okay, I'm gonna Okay, I'm gonna say how to stop the bleeding. Okay, I'm gonna say how to stop the bleeding. Okay, let me know when you're running with them. <coughs> An 18-year-old Michigan man has been charged in the connection with the slayings of three members of Detroit's LGBT, LGBTQ community. Devon Robinson is facing three counts of first-degree murder, along with assault and weapons charges. Police say Robinson fatally shot the three victims last month inside a home on the city's east side. The shooting killed 21-year-old Alante Davis, 20-year-old Paris Cameron, and 20-year-old Timothy Blanchier, all of Detroit. Prosecutors say Davis and Blanchier were gay men and Cameron was a transgender woman. Investigators are still trying to determine if an exact motive for the shooting. Robinson was arraigned early Friday and remains in custody. Alante was shot twice, while Tim and Paris were shot more than four times. Blair and Armand were not caught in the crossfire. Devon was found a week and a half later. From an anonymous tip, police suspected his mom was helping hide him. At the time of the investigation, Devon stated to police that he did not want his father to find out that he was gay. In March of 2020, Devon Robinson was convicted of first degree premeditated murder. He was handed down three life sentences without the possibility of parole. As to count one, homicide, murder, first degree, premeditated, Alante Davis. You find the defendant guilty? How do you find the defendant as to count two, homicide, first degree, premeditated, Timothy Blanchard? Guilty. And as to count three, homicide, first degree, premeditated, Paris Cameron? Guilty. Three LGBTQ victims lost their lives and were targeted, and police do believe these were victims of a hate crime. <laughs>